Welcome to the Retirement Made Easy podcast. I'm your host, Greg Gonzalez. My goal for the podcast is to help you live a better life in retirement by giving you the tools and information you need in a language that you can understand. For those of you new to the podcast, my name's Greg Gonzalez. I'm a certified financial planner and really a financial advisor to people 50 and older in St. Louis, Missouri. We're lucky enough to have clients in almost 20 different states now. So literally, our business is focused on helping those nice people plan for a successful retirement, helping them and holding their hands to make those decisions, such as claiming your social security, when to retire. There are specific times in the year that are more beneficial to some people than others from a tax standpoint and from a planning perspective. So that's kind of my job is to be the family financial advocate for people 50 and older as they're planning for this transition into life that we call retirement. And with that, that gives me a lot of opportunity in having these different conversations and these different questions that people come across. And I'm able to use my expertise and and guide them with those decisions and that planning. So about a year and a half ago, I thought, why not create a podcast to help all the people out there that might have these same issues and these same questions? And that's what the Retirement Made Easy podcast is all about. So listeners can submit their questions to our website, retirementmadeeasypodcast.com. Again, retirementmadeeasypodcast.com. It's really simple. At the bottom of the website, you can submit your questions about your own retirement. It might be about social security. It might be about a 401k. It might be about inheriting mom or dad's IRA. Whatever it is, submit it to the bottom of the website there, and we'll talk about it on the next episode of the Retirement Made Easy podcast. Or if you don't want your question talked about on the podcast or discussed, I'll just get back with you privately. I get back to everybody privately anyway. And of course, ask your permission to use the question if I think other listeners could benefit from it, which most questions, that's the case. So check out our website, retirementmadeeasypodcast.com. You can also enjoy our free resources, such as my Couple's Guide to a Dream Retirement, my Retirement Secret Sauce, my 2021 Tax Planning Guide is right there. If you're looking for a good piece on retirement budgeting your expenses, there's a piece in there that's for free. So check it out in the resources tab, retirementmadeeasypodcast.com. I don't charge for any of that stuff. And I was actually having a conversation with a listener this past week. And he said, well, you don't charge for the podcast. I, I don't hear any sponsors. Well, that's by design. So I've had some companies and some investment firms that have reached out wanting to sponsor the podcast and promote their product or service. That wasn't the intention of the podcast to begin with, and it's not going to be moving forward. So I'm not going to take sponsorships and and really sell myself out to these companies. They can certainly pay for the advertising and promotion somewhere else. There's plenty of other podcasts or networks that will take their money, but we're going to keep this podcast educational and we don't need that. So, and I know that sounds ridiculous to some people or inconceivable that someone would do a podcast to simply put information out there and try to help people, the general public, when on a topic like retirement planning without trying to benefit themselves. But I guess this is just my passion. This is what I was called to do, I feel. And I don't think I need to try to make a buck off people trying to solicit some product or service. So that's where I'm at on that. And there will be no sponsors of the podcast. Yes, of of course, there are people that contact me and, and are looking to work with a financial planner like myself and are in that retirement planning stage. And of course, I connect with those people one-on-one, but there's going to be no promoting any investment product or service. That's not the point of this podcast. So we hope to share with you valuable information, questions and conversations we're having with clients already based on retirement planning that can help you. That's my goal. So on today's episode, we're going to talk about the seven questions that people over 60 have about retirement. And this is based on a book that is excellent by Dr. Frank Luntz. The title of the book is What Americans Really Want, Really. 
The Truth About Our Hopes, Dreams, and Fears. What a great title. Now, the book is a little dated, came out in 2009, but for those of you that, that aren't familiar with Dr. Frank Luntz, he is a he does a lot of surveys and he's a big pollster. He's now shifted more to the political arena, but check him out. His videos on YouTube from some of the speeches he's given at the Milken Institute are absolutely phenomenal. All the different surveys and, and focus groups that he does on Americans to figure out where they stand. And this book is an excellent example of that. So we're going to get into that, the seven questions that people over 60 have, as Frank talks about in his book. And then we're going to go to some listener questions. Doesn't get any better than that. All right. These six questions I have probably heard over and over again, and I'm not going to use them in order as they appear in the book. Again, this is from the book by Dr. Frank Luntz. It's called What Americans Really Want, Really. So these seven questions that people have over 60 about retirement, the number one question that I hear of the seven is, will I run out of money before I run out of years? I've heard that over and over again. Will I run out of money before I run out of time? And think about that. I mean, that terrifies some people. What if they you, they burn through their retirement nest egg? They're living purely on social security, hypothetically here. What do they do for everything else? Well, I guess they got to go back to work or find some other cash flow, right? Maybe they, heaven forbid, look at a reverse mortgage, which... We don't have the time to get into that on this episode, but maybe a future episode we'll talk about reverse mortgages. Question number two of the seven, I hear this all the time, is Social Security going to be there for me? Throughout my entire career, I've had more people ask me that question. How's Social Security going to look when it's my turn to collect, right? I've paid all my money into this throughout all my working years. Is it going to be there for me and for the rest of my life and my spouse's life? That's a huge concern that people have. Question number three of seven, will I be able to afford healthcare when I get too old to work? Healthcare expenses are such a huge concern and fear of so many retired Americans. I mean, it just seems like healthcare expenses are going up and up and up. And I mean, think about it as our health declines over the years, as we get older, we're going to have more and more trips to the doctor. And as we get older, health insurance becomes more and more important to us, or at least most of us. Question number four of seven is along the same vein. It says, am I one medical emergency away from bankruptcy and ruin? It's again, that same fear that Americans have. Next question, are prescription drugs going to be so expensive at some point that I have to choose between them and food? Question number six, will I be a physical or financial burden on my spouse or my children? This is a very, very popular question. I hear this all the time. Nobody wants to be a burden on their family, on their loved ones. And the last question, question number seven, will I lose my independence and my mobility at some point? Ask anybody over 60. They want to maintain their independence and their dignity in retirement. Losing that and losing control, it's just terrible. The thought of having to depend on somebody else and losing that independence is incredibly frightening to people. And just the thought of it really eats them up. I was reading a book by Nick Murray. He's a retired financial planner. He's got a book, by the way, top three retirement books or investment books. And I think I did a podcast on that. It's called Simple Wealth, Inevitable Wealth. Check it out. That's a Christmas gift for somebody. A Simple Wealth, Inevitable Wealth by Nick Murray. But he was saying, do a little experiment. If you're near retirement, find some 80-year-old, 90-year-old that you like and you trust and, and go to them and say, I'm going to give you a scenario, hypothetical here. Imagine you have two choices. Your life has come to the point where you have two choices. Number one, you just have to vanish from the earth today. At the end of the day, just no questions asked. You're just kind of gone from the earth. Option number two, and you have this choice freely, you have to put your hat on, walk down to the bus stop, take the bus to your across town to your, your children, your adult children's house, and you have to ask them for the money you need to live on for this next month. Your choice. And what you'll find is, is that all 80-year-old, 90-year-olds will tell you, I would rather be gone from this earth than to have to rely on my kids for financial support. They don't want to be a burden to their adult children. It's an incredible and powerful analogy. 
And that's what people, by Dr. Frank Luntz's survey here, is kind of showing that people for retirees, they don't want to lose their independence and dignity in retirement. They want to maintain their control. I mean, think about retirees, especially as you get older in your 70s, 80s. Your health is more fragile. Demands in life are even greater. The cost of living keeps going up and up and up. And it can be stressful pulling income from your retirement nest egg every month while at the same time relying on Social Security and maybe a pension that you have. So again, these seven questions from Dr. Frank Luntz's book are the most popular questions that he came across in all the surveys and focus groups and polling that he did for people 60 and older. Again, the most popular one that I've heard by and large is, will I run out of money before I run out of time? Another way of saying that is, how long is my money going to last in retirement? Well, with all the planning that we do, we want to make sure that our money, our retirement nest egg, is going to be there well, well past our life expectancy. I mean, just as a financial planner, what do I tell somebody if they live until 98? And we did a retirement plan that had their money living, lasting until 92. And they live six more years than expected. Am I supposed to go to them once they're 92 and say, well, I guess you'll live too long? No, we want to make sure there's a cushion there that's going to take them into their late 90s or, you know, even 100, if that's the case. I had a client say to me once, you know, Greg, when I get to 92, I want there to be at least a half a tank of gas left to take me to 100 if need be. I love that analogy. All right, we've got some listener questions, and I think it's just my personality. I I try to pick out the ones that are a little controversial because they're more fun. So (laughs) I found a couple this week that I think you'll enjoy. The first one, and this person wants to remain anonymous, and that's perfectly fine. Nobody's going on record here, you know, so... But anyway, this person asked, Greg, on one of your previous podcasts, you mentioned that life insurance is not an investment. Please help me understand why you say that and why you believe that. You're entitled to your opinion, but I disagree. I think that if more people included life insurance in their portfolio, that they would be much better off. Thank you, Anonymous. Well, first of all, life insurance is not an investment. And how I prove that to you is only investments, there are certain investments that you can put inside of an individual retirement account. There are certain other things that you cannot invest in an IRA. So, for example, in an IRA, you can own investments such as stocks, such as bonds, such as mutual funds, ETFs. If I looked at someone's 401k, I'm going to probably find nothing but mutual funds or some variation of that. But I'm going to take a couple steps back and talk about IRAs, individual retirement accounts. Well, guess what is one asset, if you will, or or one insurance product that I can't put inside of an IRA? An IRA cannot be invested in what? Life insurance. I can't have life insurance invested inside of an individual retirement account. Well, guess what? For the vast majority of people, their retirement nest egg is invested in things that are retirement accounts, such as IRAs, individual retirement account, Roth IRAs, 401ks, 403bs. The point of, in my opinion, for most people, the point of these retirement accounts is it's money we're saving and investing for a future time in our lives when we can draw an income, right? When we can live on our retirement nest egg from the IRAs, the 401ks, Roth IRAs, whatever those retirement accounts happen to be, 457 plan, 403B, those are retirement accounts we're saving and deferring and growing the money in those accounts. We cannot, we are prevented by law from putting life insurance inside of those retirement accounts. Therefore, I don't consider it an investment at all. Now, if you make the argument that life insurance may be a great way to pay estate taxes for some people or leave a legacy for some people, and and maybe life insurance is going to fund a trust for generation planning, that's a whole separate argument. But as far as investments, 
life insurance is not an investment. You can look at variable life, which means it's a life insurance policy, a permanent life insurance that can be invested in uh, mutual funds within the insurance policy. Guess what? It's still an insurance product. Still an insurance product. And sometimes we overcomplicate retirement planning altogether, and we try to use things that aren't the best tool for the job. Life insurance in a lot of instances is used that way. I hope that helps our listeners. All right, the next question comes from a listener named Tammy. Tammy asked about, I'll just keep it, you know, kind of summarize. She's asking about a financial advisor and why her financial advisor does not give advice on social security or taxes. He only seems to deal with investments. Well, Tammy... I will never speak negatively about anybody, any other financial professional, because that's not good for our industry. But what I will say is, yes, there are financial advisors that kind of specialize in retirement planning that know something about social security, pension planning, tax planning. You just have to find the right individual. There are others that maybe are just not educated in those areas, and that's okay. I guess if they're honest about it, that's admirable. But for those of us like myself that, you know, we kind of encompass all of those areas together because that's part of the holistic retirement planning that we do. And quite frankly, by leaving any of those pieces out, it's kind of like having a a puzzle with the pieces missing. Well, you'll never you'll never complete the puzzle without all the pieces. So if we don't have the Social Security planning and the tax planning as a portion of the retirement puzzle, well, guess what? you're probably not going to be happy with the result. So my best advice for Tammy is find someone that can help you with all aspects of retirement planning, not just the investments. This next question comes from an individual who, again, wanted to remain anonymous. And I actually called them because this is pretty serious. Apparently, there's this investment proposal that promised 10% withdrawals per year guaranteed. And then at the end of 10 years, you get all your money back. So it's essentially a guaranteed 10% rate of return. And my advice to this person is run. Don't do this. I actually called this person, left them a message. They called me back. We talked about this. They're misinformed. They are simply just misinformed. There's nothing out there on God's green earth that's going to give you a 10% guaranteed return for 10 years and then you get all your money back in the 10th year or 11th year, whatever it is. That's a scam. It's or you just don't understand what it is or probably you were misinformed. So don't do that. Again, if it sounds too good to be true, it normally is. But I'm glad you got you asked the question went to our website. The last question comes from Jim or James and he writes it's a very vague email, but he said, "Greg, if you inherited an IRA of $500,000, how would you invest it? And what would be the smartest way to invest that money? So this is a very broad question that James has here. Well, this is asking me specifically, and my situation is going to be different than all the listeners. But what I will say is, okay, just hypothetically here, half a million dollars in an IRA. Well, the rules are for someone that inherits money from mom or dad, right? After January 1st, 2020, there's the 10 year rule. And what that means is, is you inherit mom or dad's IRA in a beneficiary IRA, this half million dollars, you've got to take withdrawals or distributions from the IRA. And so by doing so, you're going to pay taxes on those withdrawals. You'll pay federal and state income taxes if it's applicable. And you have to take all those withdrawals over 10 years. So theoretically, If you had no growth and you took $50,000 a year for 10 years, the $500,000 beneficiary IRA would be depleted at that point. Of course, you're going to probably want growth over those 10 years. That's the point, right? But the first thing I would look at is, okay, what's my tax burden going to be here from a tax planning perspective? In other words, if someone was going to retire in five years, it might make more sense to hold off on your distributions until the sixth year and then take all of them in year six through 10, right? Defer that tax burden, those distributions that you're gonna need to take until you retire and you don't have that earned income, right? And your taxable income's a a lower level at that point. 
So I know that sounds crazy, but that also goes into, okay, when are these distributions going to be taken? And what's the purpose of this money? So when we try to determine how an account should be invested, we always want to ask, what is the purpose of this money? What am I trying to accomplish here? And of course, we would look at somebody's risk score to see, okay, does that match their desired outcome for this money? For example, someone might say, well, I want to be smart about the money and I I have to use it within 10 years. And the purpose of it is I really kind of earmarked some of it to pay off my house. Well, we have to kind of plan for that and how we would invest it, knowing that there's going to be distributions in the near term to get your house paid off by the time you retire. So again, ask yourself, what am I trying to accomplish here? What is the purpose of this money for me, since I'm still in the point in my life where I'm trying to max out my retirement savings, what I would do, and this won't be applicable to everybody, but I might take distributions from the beneficiary IRA, and I'm, of course, going to be taxed on those. But at the same time, I would increase my retirement savings in my retirement plan, and that I get a tax deduction on, so it offsets the tax liability from the withdrawal or distribution I'm taking on the beneficiary IRA. In other words, if you had a 401k at work that you weren't maxing out, what you could do is max it out and at the same time, take distributions from the beneficiary IRA, and it would be a wash. Essentially, what you did there is you took the money from the beneficiary IRA and put it in your 401k, if you want to think about it like that. Jim, I hope that helped, but it's just too broad of a question to answer for everybody. But I hope this has been helpful. I've enjoyed this episode of the Retirement Made Easy podcast. Catch us next time and visit our website, retirementmadeeasypodcast.com. If there's anything I can help with, I'd love to. Check us out next week on the next episode of the Retirement Made Easy podcast. And remember, always dream big. The opinions voiced in this material are for general information only and are not intended to provide specific advice or recommendations for any individual. To determine which investments may be appropriate for you, please consult your attorney, tax advisor, or financial advisor prior to investing. This is a hypothetical example and is not representative of any specific investment. Your results may vary. All performance referenced is historical and is no guarantee of future results. All indices mentioned are unmanaged and may not be invested into directly. The Smart Investor Program is a directory of investment professionals. Neither Dave Ramsey nor Smart Investor are affiliates of St. Louis Retirement Advisors or LPL financial. There is no guarantee that a diversified portfolio will enhance overall returns or outperform a non-diversified portfolio. Diversification does not protect against market risk. All investing involves risk, including loss of principal. No strategy assures success or protects against loss. Securities and advisory services offered through LPL Financial, a registered investment advisor, Memra FINRA, SIPC. SIPC.